So before we talk about how you got started as an artist and how Bioworks got started, uh, I want to talk about start with like your artistic style. Um, like when you make a piece, like what do you want the viewer to get out of it? Um, I want them to get hypnotized. Like I personally love a lot of details, so that's why I put a lot of details in my work. And I get a lot of satisfaction just dissecting and looking at all the little details. So that's my objective. Like I want to. Like, oh, okay, like overall image looks great, but like you look deeper, it's like, oh, wait, there's more of these, these interesting patterns. And you look deeper, it's like, oh, they're all very different patterns and just like levels to it. So it, it, I guess it depends on the viewer. Like if you want to dig deeper, yeah, you could, there's a lot more to it. Or you could just look at the general overall image and yeah, that's the goal. Um, if you had to describe the artistic style to somebody without actually like showing them a piece, how would you describe that? I'll call it ornate. Um, I've tried to figure out if I could like brand my style, but no, it's just ornate. Like it's been done for centuries. Like a lot of inspiration was from um, filigree, from like Greek Greek architecture. Like they have a lot of floral elements and very complex. Um, but I can't talk about this without giving Ian MacArthur credit. He is a an artist from UK. I saw his style maybe eight to 10 years ago, I don't remember. And it just resonated with me. And I started drawing, my first drawing was a, an owl that's also ornate and it's heavily influenced by him. But I need to give him credit because without seeing his work, I would have never stumbled upon my current style. And I hesitate to, to talk about it because I don't want people to think I'm copying him. But luckily it's been so many years that my pattern, my style, it's evolved to be uniquely mine. So if you see his work in mine, earlier on, people got it confused a lot, which is my bad. But as I progress, it's like, it's pretty distinct now. Like, and he doesn't draw as much animals anymore. So the distinction is clear and I have to give props to him. Like he does badass work and I love it. When did you really start as an artist, like really developing and when did my work start? Uh, that's a tough question. Um, as an artist, I feel like I've decided to be an artist at age seven. Um, taking it seriously, I mean, I've always been drawing. Taking it seriously was probably high school, like junior, senior year. I was like, what am I going to do with my life? <laughs> and then during those classes, I I knew I had something different. Like, hmm, how do I describe Like. I got special treatment, which I'm lucky. Like my art teacher knew I was, I guess, at more advanced. So I never had to follow any of the class projects. Yeah, she was awesome. She, she let me do whatever I want. Um, so that lit a fire in me. And I guess to go to college, um, I didn't know much. So I went in as a graphic design major. It was just like playing with type, like spacing and all these like little minute stuff with type. It was like, shh. No, I want to draw, but that was because I was ignorant. I was like, oh, illustration is what I was into. So graduated Long Beach, Cal State Long Beach with a illustration degree. And during college is where I got the name Bioworks. Because um, I really, really love H.R. Geiger. Um, his style is known as biomechanics. And during college, I did draw a lot of biomechanic stuff. So I just went with the moniker Bioworks. So on like a personal project, like if you have like an idea in your head for like a design that you want, like where does it go from the idea? I get inspiration mostly from Instagram and Pinterest. So I scroll through those, like I follow a lot of artists and sometimes like, I mean, isn't that like the objective? Like when an artist does great work, you're inspired. It's like, oh, I want to do something like not copy, but it's like you do something badass. I'm motivated. I want to do something badass. So usually that's how it starts and, or if I'm just going through Instagram or Pinterest, like sometimes an animal pops up. Actually, majority of the time is an animal. And it's like, I just, there's no reasoning. It just happens. Like, okay, I'm going to just go with my gut feeling. Like, I wasn't planning on this. This hummingbird just happened to appear. I had no thought about it. I'm going to draw a hummingbird. And those are usually the funnest projects. Like, um, unplanned, just spur the moment, whatever I feel like doing. So the process, okay, um... Let's say I want to draw a hummingbird. I would then find a lot of references. Uh, then I'll sketch it out digitally. 
that process takes about eight to twelve hours. And then when I'm done, when I'm happy with the digital sketch, I would then size it however I want on the computer and then print it out to the exact size I want because I then have to do a graphite transfer onto I call fancy paper, which is like just archival archival paper. So once I got the chance to graphite transfer, I'll then have to ink it over and then erase all the graphite, and then that's where the fun begins. So when you think about it, by the time I even get to the fun part, I've already drawn this image three times. Right? And then it gets even crazy with pins, because you know I do a lot of pins, so I was like four times drawing it now. So I was like, sometimes it's just exhausted. I'm sick of this image. So after inking it, which usually takes about let's see, 12, minimum 12 hours, on average is like 20-ish hours. So when I'm done with, like I'm happy with the inking, I would scan it into a computer and then color it digitally. And then that would take another 12 hours. So uh, yeah, on average, each image takes minimum like 30 to 50 hours on average. The way your designs are, it's like you look at it and you get like an initial impression from like shapes and colors, but it's like the closer you look at it, it just kind of goes deeper and deeper. There's times where I could focus on a square inch and spend hours on a square inch. And I was like, what What did I just do? <laughs> like, where did time go? So yeah, like, I'm. if anything, I'm trying to like not be so detail focused. Like, I'm trying to pull back more to see the overall image instead of being stuck in all the tiny details. So that's kind of like the new perspective and like direction I'm going. Do you, do you catch yourself in the middle of the night, like you're working really hard and suddenly realize it's like two or 3 a.m. and you've been working for a long time? <laughs> it used to be like that. No, I don't have that luxury anymore. Now that um, I have kids, my schedule is just shot to hell. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I can't work late and I can't sleep in. So I'm trying to juggle and it's, it's hard. Like, yeah, having kids is probably the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean, not, I could even like expand on this, like, as a independent artist, I want people to like really think about it, like to have kids. I did it without really, I mean, I thought about it, I was like, oh, whatever, kids, easy, I could handle it. No, when I had my first kid, my productivity plummeted like at least 50%. So I want people to understand like having a kid is a huge commitment and if you're set on like a goal, you have to understand like there's gonna be giant obstacles. So, and then I had a second kid, which is like, oh, like I was, I was back on track. I was like 100% again. And then the second kid came along. I was like, okay, no more kids. <laughs> and he's reaching a point where it's manageable. So I hope to be like 100% again. But right now I'm just like juggling to get things done. I did want to ask about the different mediums because just looking on your website, I see you have um, like the metal pins, which is how our company is connected to you. Um, I saw you do like prints. I've even seen like tattoos. Um, are there any other mediums that you want to like expand into or do you have like a favorite medium that right now? Well, actually I'm going to experiment some stuff with metal promo and I've spoken to Scott about the details and I don't want to expand on it cause I want to surprise people, but it will be metal obviously then different from enamel pins and I'm going to leave it at that. And I hope it's well received because it's going to be different. Like, I don't think anyone has done it. That's why I'm excited about it. Sorry for being vague. I, I like to keep things a surprise for so people are like excited about it too. Yeah, no, that's exciting. You got to like build up a little bit of an anticipation for that. So that makes sense. Yeah, like I was, I've been talking to Scott about the process at least half a year now. And he's like, he was able to help me source the stuff I need explain the different process and even new processes you guys offer. So I was like, oh, okay, it got, my, it got the ball rolling and I have ideas. Do you have anything else that you want to talk about, like with where your brand is going in the future or like where you want to see it go? Uh, I'm diving into two new things lately. It's uh, NFTs and did, I call it bio maidens, which is kind of a quick digital drawings of ladies. Um, let me talk about NFT first. So NFT obviously is a huge thing. Everybody's aware of it. Um, when I first heard about it, like about a year ago from Beeple, I was like, okay, this is like a huge uh, movement for artists. 
Um, but I'm not like an early adopter, so I waited. And I'm like, okay, let's see how it pans out. And then I'm seeing a lot of critics, and I also see like some of my friends making some serious like money. I was like, well, okay. And then, but at the same time, I was like, well, this is really new. So I teamed up with uh, Collective for my first NFT drop, which was which happened last month. Um, it was good. It was a good experience, and I plan on doing more. But I'm really excited about another NFT project I have with Nemus. This is like a huge, to so many people involved, it's like a huge project. And ultimately, it's to um, conservation for the Amazon rainforest. And like flora, fauna. So I was like, when they pitched the idea, I was like, perfect. You know, I, I love drawing animals. I've always, like, you know, contributed to conservations. So I was like, it's the perfect match. So it was a giant, it was the biggest project of my life. It was eight pieces. And I did the math. I did. I spent over 700 hours. And it's going to be launched within the next 10, less than two weeks. Right? Like a little over a week from now, it's going to officially drop. So I'm really excited to see how that um, pans out. And it makes, and because of that big project, 700 hours, I remember the night I finished. I was so stressed and overwhelmed by that project because it was just so long that and the, during the entire time, I was um, craving to be creative. It's weird to say that because I'm already drawing stuff I love, but it was just so much of the same thing for so long. I was like, I need to ex do something else. So it was a quiet victory that night when I finished. It, it was weird because like this is the biggest project in my life and crickets, you know, like nobody knows. But at the same time, I was itching to draw something. So I drew my first digital... Bio Maiden that night at 10 p.m. Like I was tired. I didn't care. I needed to get out of my system. So I may fast forward like a month or two. I'm on my seventh digital lady and I'm just having a lot of fun. It's just quick, no rules. Uh, I'm not worried about the details. It's kind of sloppy, but that's kind of the method. So yeah, those are two things that I've been up to lately. It happens like that where you have something in your head and you just have to get it down on paper or on the computer or whatever and just get it out it's almost like i'm an addict like i need i need my fix you know if i don't get it out i'm gonna just like lose it so i i drew it like i didn't care i just had to and i still have more like there was so much pent up like creativity i was like in a way i was like i'm vomiting <laughs> all these art pieces things i've been like holding back because i couldn't like i didn't have the time to invest so yeah i'm having a good time like in the past couple of weeks if you wanted to like inspire somebody who is like an artist who's like starting to grow, um, even if they're doing art in like a different medium and they're at that threshold where they want to make it like their full time thing to dedicate all of their time to, like, what does it take for them to get over that hump? Oh, okay. Um, for me, I played it very safe. Um, I, I did have a full time job, like you, like I said earlier. Um, I saved a lot, a lot. Like I, I hypothetically thought to myself, what am I to make zero money for the next year? So I saved enough. Actually, I was crazy. I saved like at least two years of income so I could take the, take the jump. Meaning if I make zero money, I could still survive for two years. So that was it. I gave myself two years and it was full steam ahead. Like, um, you have to be obsessive and well see it's complicated because i don't recommend any er, just anyone doing what i did like i had a bit of success be, while I was still working full-time so it gave me confidence to jump in like to be fully independent i don't know if i would have done that if i didn't already have some success that i could bank on but at the end of the day i'm still obsessed like like, I want to draw. I need to draw. I would even think, like, if I'm won the lottery, I'll be doing the exact same thing. Like, nothing's going to change. Maybe I just sell that stuff. That will change. <laughs> but drawing, it's it, it's everything to me. Like, aside from, from, like, my friends and family, like, it's my number one love. And I think you just have to be obsessed. If you're not obsessed, that's fine. You have a full-time job. But I'm not – I can't do that. Like, full-time job is just making me depressed. So I had no options but to go independent. And if you're not obsessed, you have to think about all the people. 
like I don't want to say I'm competing with people because I feel like we live in abundance, but to say that I'm competitive. So I was like, I'm competing against the world, like seven billion people. I was like, I better get my shit together if I'm even gonna like, like break even almost, you know. So if you're not obsessed, don't do it. Like you, I've eaten a lot of shit. I've had a lot of bad projects, a lot of bad clients. And sometimes I, when I talk about, it, I want to get emotional because it's like it's a brutal journey. So I just like I don't necessarily recommend it. Like there are many times where I'm almost broke and just want to give up. But I don't know. I'm I'm like stubborn. So yeah, I guess the, the takeaway is just be obsessed. If you're not obsessed, find something you're obsessed about. <laughs>